Hello guys, it's Ademola from SPSSBoss.com. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to calculate Z-scores in SPSS. First, what are Z-scores? Let's look at this simple example. Suppose we measure the height of all students in a class. We found out that the mean height was 1.73 and the standard deviation of their height is 0.05. If you remember from the previous lecture, the mean height is the average height of all the participants and the standard deviation is how much on a average their height deviate from the mean. So their height deviate by 0 0.05 from the mean of 0.173, that's 0 0.05 meters on average. Now, if it's the case that a student is 1.78 meters tall, this means that the student is one standard deviation above the mean. If you look at this simple calculation, it explains why the person is one standard deviation above the mean. That's 1.73, which is the mean, plus the standard deviation is 1.78, which is the height of that particular student. This figure and this value we've just calculated here with this simple example, stating that the one standard deviation above the mean is this value, we have just calculated the Z-score. The Z-score allows us to estimate the number of units by which a particular student is higher than the mean. That's your Z-score. And it assumes that your height is normally distributed for us to be able to estimate that this value is one standard deviation above the mean. One hint that you have to keep in mind that we can simply standardize any variable that is, convert them to their z-score in order to generate a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. There's a simple formula for calculating z-score, which is x. x is the number. In this case, x for this student is 1.78. The, the x-bar is 1.73, which is the mean, and the sigma sign, which is the standard deviation. If you plot these values we have up here into this formula, you will arrive at the z-score of 1. Now, what are the uses of z-score? Why do we need z-scores anyways? Now, the first thing you need to know about z-score is that it enables us to calculate the probability of a score occurring within a normal distribution. So, for example, let's take this z-score of 1. Now, this student that is 1.78 meters tall, how many students is this student taller than? We can look at the table of normal distribution to find out at the z-score of 1, if you are 1.78 meters tall, how many people are you taller than? Now, if we go to the table of normal distribution, you can see that at the z-score of 1, you would be taller than 84% of the students, which is quite good. So that's how you use the Z-score. You can calculate the probability of a score with a Z-score. Without this Z-score value, it will be very hard for you to estimate percentage of student that this particular student is taller than. So now you know the importance of Z-score. You can apply Z-score to any particular variable. You can apply it to income. You can apply it to scores in an exam. If you take an exam, for example, if a student calls, scored 60 and the, the mean is 55 and because the student scored 5 points more than the mean, the student feels like it's performed better than the other students. But with the Z-score, you'll be able to find out what percentage of all the students did that particular student perform better than. And that's the importance of the Z-score. Let's look at another example which will give you an in-depth knowledge of calculating the Z-score. Let's go to this example here. John is boasting that he's one of the tallest in the class because his height was 1.82. Now, we need to find out how many units of standard deviation does his height differ from the mean of all the other students in class. We use this formula up here. We already know the x value. The x value is 1.82 and the mean is 1.73. So straight away, we know that it's 0 0.9, the difference between x and the x bar, which is the mean. And we divide that by the standard deviation of 0 0.05. What we get is 1.8. By knowing the z-score now, which is 1.8, we can easily calculate how tall John is compared to the rest of the class. We can't find out that information without knowing the z-value. 
which is one of the significance of the z value. Now, if we go to the table of normal distribution and find 1.8, we would see that John is taller than 96% of the class, which means John is actually right by boasting that is one of the tallest in the class because only 4% of the class is taller than John. Now, that's the example for you to estimate what is the probability of a score occurring within a frequency distribution when you know the z value. There is a second use of z score which is normally the reason people use it in SPSS because it allows you to create a meaningful composite or combined variable out of two or more variables with different scales, mean and standard deviation. A good example of such is if you have 10 questions measuring job satisfaction. Five of those questions are measured on a scale of one to five, and 10 of those questions are measured on a scale of one to 10. These two sets have different scale, will have different mean, and definitely different standard deviation. In order to create an overall composite score for job satisfaction, we need to calculate Z score for all these 10 scales and then add them up. But in this example, we're going to look at creating a composite for height and weight. We want to add height and weight together in order to come up with the body size. To standardize scores or get Z values in SPSS, go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and move into your descriptives. Move in your height and your weight, the subject height and subject weight, move it in and all you have to do is save standardized value, also known as Z value, and just click OK. And that's going to give you the Z score of each of the participants. Now, if we go back here, you would see that we have Z height and Z weight. Let's look at this participant, for example. This is telling us that this participant is one standard deviation higher than the mean of zero. If you remember the int we discussed here, Z scores have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. How can we find out if that is true? Go to analyze descriptive statistics and frequency, put in those two Z scores we just calculated now, and make sure you get the mean and the standard deviation of both. Click on continue, click on OK. Now, is it true or false? It's true. The mean are both zero and the standard deviation are one, which means that we are right to say that this I and the weight are now standardized, that is, they are measured in a standard value that will allow us to create a composite body size. 